So with the last few bits of boarding done, we could start focusing on the detail, whether that was sorting out the little hatches into the loft space or recreating a little bit of the space in the eaves. So I started putting in some little headers at the top of the hatches. We're gonna build insulated doors into the loft space here. And then obviously I just need to insulate between the new studs and then we go over the top of that as well. Couldn't find a small enough spirit level so just use an app on my phone which is always fairly accurate and good enough for the job. So then I had to get one more sheet of 50mm. We were running pretty low and I wanted to do it in full sheets where possible rather than using up tiny bits in a patchwork. And this area here is going to be behind the desk and it's going to be slightly different because we're not using uh, plasterboard here. We're going to use some of the old pine boards and panel it and keep it quite rustic. So the idea is to put this 50mm of insulation on and then we're going to batten off that to leave a little cavity to run our cables along for sockets and then we'll uh, be able to panel over the top of those battens. And I found it easier, rather than trying to measure out uh, each piece, you can overlap it and then cut through flush and then just trim it to size. We'll line these entrance hatches anyway to neaten things up and then using some of the other offcuts to tidy up the bottom there and make sure we're continuous all the way to the floor. I've also stuffed insulation between the joists on the other side so there's no airflow coming underneath these floorboards. And then it's time to tape up all the joins. Now we've done this throughout the whole of the roof um, and I'll, I'll touch on that with some more footage in the next video but this little section here just shows how it works it's just a peel off uh, aluminium tape and that just makes sure that that foil that's on the insulation creates a vapour barrier and then it was uh, delivery of plasterboard to shift up to the top now we're really fortunate in that we can just about get full 8 foot or 2.4 metre sheets up there we don't have to buy the small sheets, but you can see here it's a little bit of a technique to get around the walls. And of course, these walls are all decorated while the carpet is still the old stuff. Uh, we didn't really want to mark the walls. And with these boards weighing 25 kilo each, it was really important where we put them and where we placed them up in the loft. And we also didn't want to bring up too many here at one point. And this is where the plans started to change. These old stud walls, which is where the old lath and plaster was, didn't need to be where they were. We just assumed that we'd stick to where they were, but actually it made sense to extend the rooms into the eaves slightly. So what I had snugly fit all these 50mm insulation boards in, we had to take those out and we decided to cut all of the studs off just below the purlin. Now these are non-structural studs just simply nailed to the side of the rafters and the joists below. So what I did is I got my circular saw ripping jig which is simply a piece of plywood with a guide on it and then screwed that to the existing studs then using a spirit level made sure that it was dead flat and then I could run the circular saw through. And this is the cordless one, so the blade's a little bit small, but it was good enough to get all the way, uh, nearly all the way through. And then I just removed them and finished them off. And although I could have done it with a handsaw, this was a way of just ensuring that we had a really straight line. And we could obviously then board the bottom of that, because this is where the cupboards are going to go in under the eaves. So then we put a tiny little stud wall, we've gained 1.2 metres here. So we've moved back into the eaves, put a timber on the underside of the rafters and one down onto the joists. And then we're just using up some of that old timber as studs. I made sure we insulated that space, so we rolled out some mineral wool and spare sheep's wool there, just to bring it up to kind of 300mm total over the top of the joists 
because this is going to be a, a non-access space, this will be blocked off once the wall's in. And this is the final one of the hatches into the uh, loft areas, and I had a little bit of the 50mm in the middle there, which was able to be removed, and then that would be, enable me to bang out the two bits of 100mm between the studs, and we'll frame out that one as well. Now I needed that access because the next stage of the project was to start boarding out the little snug area which is where we've extended into the eaves. We wanted to insulate um, the outside of the truss there so make a feature of that timber. There's no easy way of doing this, propping up yeah. big sheets on slope ceilings, so where there's all sorts of yoga positions going on here, but we managed to get them up in time. And that was pretty much it for that day, uh, we got a good bit done. The next stage will be properly boarding out the whole uh, of the ceilings. So that's where we got to. There's lots more of that foil tape to go up and then just a bit of a clear out ready for boarding. So check out the next video when we'll be transforming this place into something resembling a room. And thanks for watching. Remember if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.